Hi, this is Marty Lechletter, Product Manager, Forums Experience Builder. This is the demo portion of my presentation at IBM Connect. So in this demo, what I do is create a multi-page training request application. It's complete with services for pre-population of fields, workflow, roles, privileges, JavaScript rules. We add it to portal, we make it responsive, and we do all that inside of 15 minutes, or at least we try. So let's start by creating a new application. We'll call it Training Rec. And the first thing I'm going to do is add a file. I'm going to use this file as an image in my form. So we'll go ahead and select that. And then let's go over to our form canvas. And the first item I will put on the canvas is this image. And I'll display that training picture that I have. We'll make that a little bit smaller. Let's add some text underneath this for my form header. We'll use sign up for training. And we can make that bold. And perhaps a line underneath would look nice. We'll make that three pixels wide and pick a custom color. And then I like to put the body of my form in a section. So sections are independent blocks that can have their own formatting. I'm just going to use the outline rather than have a gray body to that section. And I did say multi-page form, right? So this is going to have some page navigation. So what I've done is I've created page one. And in this case, I'm going to collect my data on page one. And then I'm going to click duplicate because I want all those elements in the second page of my form as well. And we'll call this second page summary. And then on the first page, I'm going to disable the action button. So these are the submit and cancel buttons. So let's continue building out page one. And the first item I'm going to ask the user for is their first name. And I'm going to set my fields to full width. This will help when we make this form responsive later. It's also a, uh, a nice presentation in that whatever the column is, the field will adjust to it. So we plagiarize from that and we uh, create last name and then telephone number. And then let's create uh, an email field and then we'll add uh, a drop down below that. And this drop down will be for selecting a course. In drop downs, you can type in the different options that users see. But in this case, what I want to do is get it from a service. So let's go ahead and create a new service. So what I do is search. In this case, I've got a training catalog, which is out there. And I don't want to give it any inputs because what I want to do is get all of the course titles which are currently offered in the catalog. So this mapping of the service request is simply just taking all those titles from the catalog and mapping it into the drop-down both the saved value and the displayed value in the drop-down so if I go ahead and preview this now we can see that the form presents nicely and the drop-down is working so it's calling those elements via the search to populate the drop-down. So let's continue on with the form. So once the user selects the course, what I want to know is, well, who's the instructor of the course? I also want to know what is the date that the course is offered. And the cost of the course. And then we'll put in a field here and we'll call this description. And we'll make that full width. So you can see how the full width field works here, spanned across two columns. So now what I want to do is, based on the course that's selected, I want to go ahead and retrieve information about that course. So I'm going to set up another service mapping, and I'm going to go to that course catalog again and this time instead of doing a search I'm going to do a retrieve 
and the input for my retrieve is going to be the course that I selected. So we're going to say the one I selected, we'll map that to the course title in the catalog, and then once we find that record, go ahead and get me the course description, the instructor, the course title, I'm sorry, the, the instructor, the date offered, and the rest of the fields that I'm looking for. And we simply just map those in. So now we can preview this once more. And we can see the drop down is being populated and when I select a course the other fields are being populated via the retrieve. Now on the summary page what I'd like to do is echo back the data that I've collected. So let's start with the employee. Well I'm collecting the first and the last name so we'll put that there. And then the course. So what you can see is I can insert variables from the form. So these, these data elements that I've collected, I can insert those into the body of the text. The text widget is like a mini word processor. And this is a common pattern where what you do is you collect some information and then you echo it back, ask if it's okay, and then you submit. We're also going to use the second page in workflow. More on that later. So we see that this is working nicely. But the one problem I have here is that I need to populate the first and last name, the email, and the telephone number. Now most organizations will have directory services, some sort of LDAP or other directory where you can pull this information. We do in this case, so what I'm going to do is call a service when the form is loaded. And what I'm going to do is just grab this information and I'm going to map it into my form. So, so we'll preview this once more. And you see my name, email, and telephone are in there. I can pick the course, and all the information is being echoed back in that second page. Now let's continue with this, this second page. I, I indicated that we're going to use this in workflow. So what I want to do is add a multi-line entry field here, and I'm going to call this Manager's Comments. We'll say OK. Now let's go over to Stages. So this is the word for workflow. And you can see that this form has got to start in an end stage. So every form has got to start in an end stage. But what I want is a middle stage. I want a stage called Approver or Approve All. And when the employee fills out the form, I want the submit button to send it to approval, and then approval can send it to end. And we'll change the submit button text once it's in the approval state to approve, which is uh, a little bit more accurate. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide the manager's comments in the start stage and then I'm going to hide the first page in the approval stage. Now every Forms Experience Builder application comes with administrator, initiator, and record owner. In this case I'm defining a new role. I'm going to call it approvers. And you can either explicitly assign members to a role so I could take any group or individual out of my LDAP, or I could dynamically do it if I left it open. So in this case, uh, I, I assign all authenticated users, and I indicate that in the approver state, they can update the form. So let's continue on. I'm going to add a checkbox here. And what we want is for the manager to actually click on this. And we want to get their acceptance with a date stamp.
So how am I going to do the logic behind this? Well, I'm going to use a little bit of JavaScript. So this is the on-click event for the checkbox, man manager approval checkbox. So what I'm saying is the business object, BO, and then I go and I use that pop-up there to grab the field approval date. And I'm going to say let's set its value to new date, which is the JavaScript function for today's date. So I close that out, and then I'm going to set a rule. I'm going to say when that manager approval checkbox is clicked, what I want to do is disable the approval date as well as the manager approval checkbox. So in other words, once that's clicked, it's locked down. You can't unclick it. So we just simply disable each of these fields based on that condition. And we can preview this. So if we go to uh, fill out the form first and then go to the second page, we can see that we click that and that is now locked down. So the click event sets the date in the field and then the rule locks it down or disables it. Now I don't want the manager approval and approval date to show up in the, in the start stage. So what I'll do is I'll go to the start stage and say let's hide those two. So these are things that only the manager will see. So we'll save this and we're pretty much done now. So let's go ahead and let's generate the application. So up until this point what I've been doing is just simply design. When I click deploy it's actually generating the web application, the data structure underneath, and in a matter of seconds, I've got a live web application. So now we can go ahead and populate a few records. And I have this by default coming up with a blank form. You could, once the user clicks submit, have it go off to a different URL. But this default makes it convenient to add a number of different records. So we'll add uh, some records, and this will let us go into the view results and actually see the data. So each application has its own URL. It has view results. It has the form itself, or multiple forms. Uh, the view results gives you automatically some reports and some charts. These charts are all URL addressable, so you can take these individual charts and you can embed them in any application you want, independent of the rest of the application. And here's the data structure which it created. This was all automatic for me, based on deploying the application. And you can see the different records that I've entered here. Now if you look under stage, you can see that these are all in the approval stage. So if I was a manager, I would typically get notification, an email link to this form, and I would see just the form. Um, this is another way of just simply going in and looking at what's in the queue. So we'll just approve a couple of these. And I already see a mistake here. The page navigation, I probably don't want that when the manager can only see one page. So we can go back and fix that. And you can see that the approved forms, they changed from approval to end state. So the workflow is working. So let's go ahead and we'll go back to stages and we'll go to the approval page and approval stage in the workflow and we'll just tie those so those won't show up anymore. So we've built our application. We redeploy that minor change now let's go over to WebSphere Portal. So I've created a page in WebSphere Portal and there's a place waiting for this form to, uh, to be put into. So what I can do is I can search for the Forms Experience Builder portlet. And then I simply pop that into the page. I save this on the page and now I'm able to configure this. 
So I could either type in the application URL or the results URL, or I could go to a list of the different applications on my server, which I have access to, and pick from one of them, which I'll, I'll do right here. So then when I say OK, it renders that application on the portal page. And there's something I see here which I don't like, which is that horizontal scroll. So we'll go back into the form and fix that. And I also see an outline to the form which I don't like. That doesn't seem to match with the other elements on the page. So let's go back into the app to make this correction. But first, I'm going to show you how I'm going to make this. So I have two lines of CSS in a file and it's tied to a media rule. And The media rule says if it's less than 699 or 699 and less. Now the form happens to be 700 so that portal column is less than 700 which means that these media rules would kick in. Now the the page with class that I have in that file is a custom class so what I'm going to do is pop that into the custom CSS class names on each page in my application. The other class that I had in that CSS file is just a standard class uh, which is documented in Forms Experience Builder. So let's go grab that CSS file. So this is the one that I just showed you the two lines in. So that's now attached to the application and what I'm going to do is specify I'm going to use the styles in that style sheet and I also changed the the overall look to simple which will get rid of that outline. So the CSS I'm introducing is just simply going to augment what's already there in the simple style sheet in the other styles that Forms Experience Builder automatically generates. So if I minimize my window here a little bit uh, you can see the responsive behavior with this new style sheet. So as this gets smaller, the fields get smaller. And this is one of the reasons why I like going with the full width specification for each of the fields. So most of the elements, you know, if not you know, just about all of them in Forms Experience Builder will respond. So if I look at my portal page again, and we'll just reload this, you can see that the outline is gone and the horizontal scroll is gone. So there you have it. Uh, well, not quite 15 minutes. Thank you.